Hey there, this video is all about the dynamic range of the Canon R7, and this is a question that probably a lot of us have about the R7 is how good the dynamic range is. Now it has C-Log3 in the camera, so it has a lot of potential to have a lot of dynamic range. In this video, I'll be doing some overexposure and underexposure tests to see how much latitude we have, the noise, the colors, and how much we can save in terms of detail in both the highlights and the shadows. I'll also be comparing the R7 with the R5C because that's a good baseline. I also don't have a way to get an actual number for dynamic range, but we'll take a look and see how well these cameras do against each other. Now, we'll start this off by doing a quick comparison between the R5C and the R7. Take a look and see how you do. Well, <laughs> I think they look pretty similar. And that's really no surprise to me because they both shoot in C-Log3, they're both oversampled images. And if you're curious about how these two images compare against each other, I did a whole video about if the R7 is a good B cam for the R5C, I'll leave that link down below. So now let's get into some of these tests here. And there's a few things that I wanna talk about first and that's noise reduction. Noise reduction can affect the dynamic range of the camera. So for these tests, I use the R7 with the standard noise reduction. And then in the R5C, I set the noise reduction spatial filter to four and the frame correlation to two. And those are kind of um, the sort of middle ground. And if you're curious about that, I talk about this in a full video about noise reduction about the R5C and also in a low light performance of these two cameras. So I'll leave those linked down below as well. Now for these tests here, we set both of the cameras up in the same way or as close as I could. They're both in C-Log3. The R5C is in 4K XF ABC, 4 to 2 10-bit long up. And the R7 is in C-Log3, 4K fine, 4 to 2 10-bit in IPB. That's basically as close as I could get these two cameras to each other. We'll start off with the underexposure test. And the way I did this was I set both cameras to F2.8 at the base ISO of 800. Of course, I'm shooting in 24 frames a second with 180 degree shutter. And then I just adjusted the exposure using lights and set the exposure with the lights based on a gray card. I used false color in the R5C and zebras in the R7. And then what I did is I stopped down the aperture to underexpose. So we'll take a look at the R7 on its own and then compare it with the R5C. Well, the R7 I think really does hold its ground here and does pretty well in the shadows against the R5C. I'd say the R7, the noise starts around two stops under. It's good to about two and a third stops. It gets pretty messy at two and two third stops and lower. I'd say that the R7 and the R5C were really similar in terms of noise in the shadows. But what was weird to me was that the R5C definitely had a serious color shift going on right around that time at two and two thirds and below. So that was kind of weird to me. Although I don't think I would be using, I would be diving that deep into the shadows to recover that information because it both, both the R7 and the R5C got pretty noisy, but I think the color shift was pretty weird. Now onto the overexposure test. And I'm sorry about the funky lighting here. I had to use all the lights I had to get enough exposure. 
and I had issues with one of my lights, so the light's a little harsh, but anyways, what I did was I set the cameras to F16 at the base ISO of 800, and then I opened up the aperture to overexpose the image, and then I just adjusted the image in post to try to get the exposure looking roughly the same, just to determine how far we could reach into the highlights. So let's take a look here again, we'll take a look at the R7 as it goes through the overexposure, and then we'll compare it with the R5C. R7 did great in the highlights. I would say it held up pretty well to almost four stops or right under four stops, but there was definitely a hint of funkiness at four stops over, and then it was definitely unusable by five stops. So I'd probably say the R7 is good up to about three and two thirds or four stops over, which is a lot of latitude in the highlights. The R5C was good at four stops and unusable at five. I'd probably rate the R5C being good up to about four and a third or four and two thirds. So I would say the R5C has approximately two thirds more stops of latitude in the highlights. Again, I didn't have the exact way to measure that, but that's just a, a, an estimate that I got there. And they both held color really, really well in the highlights. Overall, I am really impressed with the R7, as I'm saying throughout this video. There is that one weird thing about the R5C and the color shift in the shadows below two stops, but again, I don't think it's really much of an issue because I probably wouldn't be digging that deep into the shadows anyways because there's so much noise down there. But there's a lot more latitude in the highlights with these cameras in C-Log3, so you have a lot more room to play up in the highlights. The best thing you can do to expose these cameras is really just to protect your highlights. You'll get the maximum dynamic range, of course you won't blow up the image, and you'll get lots of detail. I made a, a detailed video about the R5C and how to expose it, which I'll leave linked down below. And in general, I always leave related videos in the description down below, so if you're watching a video and you have more questions, check out down there, there's a bunch more videos. As I said, very impressed with the R7, especially Especially for being costing less than a third of the R5C. Very, very cool. Now, I don't have a way to get the actual number of usable stops at dynamic range, but Gerald Undone rated the R5C, I think, at 12.8 or 12.9 stops with those, those noise reduction settings. So with that and what I got, I would probably say the R7 will give you 12 and a quarter or 12 and a half stops of usable dynamic range, which definitely puts it in the ballpark of the R5C, the A7S III, the FX3, which are in the high 12s. So very, very cool. I figured a lot of you have questions about the dynamic range, and I just wanted to put this out there. If you are interested in more R7 content or stuff about videography, content creation, and camera gear, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.